Hello, my name is Nikki Rump, and today I will be evaluating Ralph Lauren Corporation. I will start this evaluation off by viewing the executive summary. This section will cover the highlights, the summary analysis, company profile, management, and industry outlook. So let's discuss some of the highlights used throughout this report. One, Polo Ralph Lauren is a premier global player in the design, distribution, and marketing of lifestyle product, products such as men's, women's, and children's apparel, accessories, fragrances, and home furnishings. They have a favorable consumer brand recognition and customer loyalty. In addition, they have a very strong financial position. Here you will see a quick snapshot of Ralph Lauren in the current marketplace. You will see that it is currently evaluated at $165.80 per share. In addition, you will see that its market capitalization is $15 billion, its cash is at $1.35 billion, its last 12 month revenue is at $7 billion, its operating cash flow is at $1.04 billion, its free cash flow is at $742 million, and its dividends is currently at $36,000. I have forecasted its earnings per share, well, I have forecasted its target price in one year at $166.11. Now let's take a view of the company's profile. Ralph Lauren Corporation designs, markets, and distributes men's, women's, and children's apparel, accessories, fragrances, and home furnishings to customers worldwide. Some of the company's brands include, but are not limited to, Polo by Ralph Lauren, Ralph Lauren Purple Label, Black Label, Blue Label, Ralph Lauren Children's Wear, Denim and Supply Ralph Lauren, Chaps and Club Monaco constituting one of the world's most widely recognized families and consumer brands. Ralph Lauren was founded on October 14, 1939 in New York. Its headquarters is currently located in New York City. Its sector is consumer goods. Its industry is textile apparel clothing. They currently employ over 14,000 full-time employees, and their company website is www.ralphlauren.com. Now, let's take a look at Ralph Lauren's management. First, we will start with the founder, Ralph Lauren himself. Ralph Lauren serves as the chairman and chief executive officer for Ralph Lauren. He founded the company in 1967 and has since cultivated the iconography of America into a global lifestyle brand. Ralph Lauren is an internationally recognized fashion designer. He provides the board of directors with valuable leadership in areas of design, brand management, and marketing. Ralph Lauren has been instrumental in defining the company's image and direction. Next up, we have Roger Farah, who serves as the president and the chief operating officer for Ralph Lauren. Prior to joining the company, he was chairman of the board of directors for the Venators Group Incorporated, now known as Foot Locker Incorporated from December 1949, 1994 until 2000. He provides the board of directors with intimate knowledge of Ralph Lauren's operations, challenges, and opportunities. He has developed strong marketing, brand management, and consumer insight over his 30-year tenure in the retail industry. In addition, Roger has both experience managing diversified global companies and an extensive understanding of the challenges facing public companies. Next, we have Jacqueline Namero, who serves as the Executive Vice President and the Director for Ralph Lauren. She was the President and Chief Operating Officer for Jones Apparel Group, Incorporated, from January 1998 until March 2002. On November 1, 2013, Jacqueline will serve as the company's President and Chief Opera Operating Officer. Having over 30 years of retail brand management and operation experience, Ms. Namara brings strong leadership and business experience to the Board of Directors. 
She also provides the board with valuable insight and perspective into Ralph Lauren's opera operations, wholesale division, licensed products, global supply chain, and global manufacturing and merchandising. Next, we have Mitchell Kosh, who serves as the Senior Vice President of Human Resources for Ralph Lauren. Mr. Koch served as the Senior Vice President of Human Resources for Conesco Inc. For, from February 2000 to J July 2000. He held an executive human resource position with the Venators Group starting in 1996. Last but not least, we have Christopher Peterson, who serves as the Senior Vice President and Chief Financial Officer for Ralph Lauren. He oversees the company's global finance and information technology organization. He is a world-class financial executive with 25 years of broad-based financial and operational experience, primarily in global consumer products industry. These graphs depict or break down the current shares by the owners. As you'll see, um, Ralph Lauren currently has the most shares out of the owners, coming in at 500. 44,952 shares, and Roger Serra has the second most shares at 253,421 shares. Um, currently, Ralph Lauren has 90.48 million shares outstanding. Next, we will take a look at Ralph Lauren's dividends per share versus earnings per share. Year-on-year, year, both dividends per share and earnings per share, excluding unusual items, growth increased 100% and 12.25% respectively. The positive trend in dividend payment is significant since very few companies in the apparel slash accessories industry pay a dividend. Additionally, when measured on a five-year annualized basis, dividends per share growth, Ralph Lauren ranked the highest amongst its industry peers while their earnings per share growth is in line with the industry average. Now let's take a look at the industry outlook. For the most part, as long as the economic recovery and current consumer spending trends remain steady, the U.S. retail sector as a whole will continue to grow, benefiting the relative U.S. industries, operators, and investors. The trend towards luxury and the expansion of motivated shoppers will contribute to the overall retail sector's growth over the next five years. Across the sector, profit margins average 3.6% of revenue and annualized growth is expected to maintain a steady 2.1% rate through 2018. Concentrated expansion efforts by brand name retailers will lead to revenue and profit growth pushing them to the top tier of their businesses in this $3.39 trillion sector. However, with the rise of e-commerce, many retail industries are becoming obsolete. IBIS World Incorporated predicts that within the next five years, traditional brick and mortar retail stores will be replaced by internet-based retailers at an accelerated pace because the technology-savvy consumers need for convenience surpasses the need for visiting a storefront. Stores that sell goods that can also be purchased online will bear the brunt of these losses during that time. We will now examine the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for Ralph Lauren Corporation. This is known as a SWOT analysis. First, let's start with Ralph Lauren's strengths. Ralph Lauren's retail stores focus on showcasing the world of Ralph Lauren by offering a diversified selection of luxury products to consumers. Ralph Lauren has a favorable consumer brand recognition and customer loyalty. In addition, the company can target a large range of customers through its relationships with large department stores worldwide. Ralph Lauren generates revenue from three distinct but integrated business segments the wholesale, retail, and licensing. The largest part of its revenue comes from its wholesale division, which sells Ralph Lauren's products to department stores. Now let's take a look at some of their weaknesses. One of Ralph Lauren's weaknesses is their dependency 
on the sales of its large retail stores for generating revenues and profits. Also, as an international brand, the company is exposed to multiple markets, which cause increased exposure to the craze of fluctuating exchange rates. In addition, Ralph Lauren is largely dependent on the sales of the company's polo tops, specifically the Create Your Own Polo, which allows customers to personalize their polos by choosing the color, horse, and fit of the top. Now let's discuss some of their opportunities. Um, some of their opportunities include improving their brand recognition and conditions in developing countries, um, enhancing direct-to-consumer business, launching new lines and maintaining brand strength through retail perform um, platforms, and last but not least, they can invest in infrastructure to support glowing global reach. Now let's discuss the infamous threat. One of the threats involves changes in exchange rates because these will affect the prices and foot traffic in stores where Ralph Lauren goods are sold. Um, changes in consumer style preferences is also a threat because due to these in new um, emerging fashion trends, they can affect sales. The rise of counterfeit products is also a major threat because it can dilute Ralph Lauren's brand image and decrease sales. Also, um, there's major competition with other industry leaders such as Abercrombie & Fitch, Coach, and Burberry. Last but not least, um, although Ralph Lauren has witnessed some improving signs in Europe in the most recent quarter, its wholesale business in the region continues to be affected by the weak macroeconomic conditions in Italy, Spain, and Southern Europe. Now we will dive into quarters by competitive forces. First, we will start with the threat of substitute products. The threat of substitute products is low to medium. Ralph Lauren's products are bought by upper middle to upper class customers. Since consumers in these social groups tend to wear high end luxury brands to display affluence, the demand for brands like Ralph Lauren is expected to continue. However, the rise of counterfeit products represents a growing problem for the company, especially in markets such as China. The quality of counterfeit products has improved over the years and stands to be a threat in the near future as it has the potential of diminishing the company's brand value. Next, we will take a look at the threat of the entry of new competitors. The threat of new entrants is low to medium. Middle to high income earners are attracted to luxury companies like Ralph Lauren due to brand recognition and customer loyalty, which are very important and oftentimes difficult to achieve. So, I feel that it would be very challenging for relatively unknown companies to compete with Ralph Lauren on this basis without significant investment. In addition to brand recognition, new players would have to acquire adequate floor space to complete with Ralph Lauren. Acquiring floor space is very difficult as department stores such as Macy's are often already pressed for space. And since floor space is not a factor in internet retail, the barrier of entry for internet businesses is very low and has the potential of attracting new companies to start selling apparel, footwear, and accessories online. Now let's examine the intensity of competitive rivalry. The rivalry between fashion companies targeting upper middle to upper class customers is medium to high. The presence of several established players in the luxury market, along with the rising number of internet-based players, poses a threat to Ralph Lauren. There are numerous brands for consumers to choose from. These companies primarily compete on the basis of brand recognition and consumer preference. Apart from these established companies, there is a rising threat of competition of internet-based companies selling apparel, accessories, and other products. These competitors could put a strain on Ralph Lauren's bottom line in the near future. Now we move on to the bargaining power of customers. I would say for the most part, Ralph Lauren provides their customers with luxury products that are not a necessity. This means that their sales are dependent on consumer confidence. Fortunately, consumer confidence has increased since the recession 
as the company has began to recover. Ralph Lauren's products are sold through three distinct channels, wholesale, retail, and licensing, which account for roughly 45, 52, and 3% of its net revenues in fiscal year of 2013, respectively. Wholesale transactions include sales made through major department stores and specialty stores across North America, Europe, Asia, and Latin America. Ralph Lauren's three largest wholesale customers account for about 45% of the wholesale revenues in fiscal 2013, with Macy bringing in about 12% of the total net revenues. So, wholesale customers such as Macy hold the bargaining power as they could substitute Ralph Lauren's products with other competitors' products or private label offerings. Financial problems with these wholesale customers could also cause disruption in Ralph Lauren's bottom line. Last but not least, let's talk about the suppliers and the bargaining power. Instead of manufacturing its own products, Ralph Lauren is engaged in over 700 different contracts with manufacturers across the world. Since the company has a diverse supplier base, their manufacturers' bargaining powers are restricted. Thus, no one supplier or manufacturer has too much power over the company. With this arrangement, Ralph Lauren has the upper hand in negotiating prices with its manufacturers. If prices with the supplier become too expensive, Ralph Lauren can dissolve their business relationships with them. However, suppliers generally share increased costs in raw materials and labor with the company through pricing. Now we will dive into the financial statement analysis. And please note that um, the following financial ratio analysis was completed based on Ralph Lauren's fiscal year of 2013 statement with the year ending on March the 30th, 2013. Liquidity ratios. Liquidity ratios measure a firm's ability to pay its short-term liabilities with its short-term assets. For most investors, it is a major measure of financial health. Ralph Lauren has its current liabilities covered 2.64 to times over, which indicates adequate liquidity. The quick ratio is 1.84 times because less than half of their current assets are tied in inventory. Ralph Lauren's cash ratio is 1.16 is normal as businesses usually do not plan to keep their cash and cash equivalents at levels with their current liabilities because they can use a portion of the idle cash to generate profit. Overall, from this data, it can be concluded that Ralph Lauren has a high degree of liquidity and should have no trouble meeting its current liabilities as they become due. Next up, we have long-term solvency ratios. These ratios measure a company's ability to pay its long-term debt and the interest on that debt. Currently, Ralph Lauren uses 30% debt and 70% equity for its long-term financing activities. Ralph Lauren's debt equity ratio is 8.06. The times interest earned ratio and cash coverage ratios are both extremely high, indicating the firm's debt obligation can easily be met with the cash generated from sales. Next up, we have our turnover ratios. Turnover ratios indicate how efficiently or intensively a company uses its assets to generate sales and collect cash. An inventory turnover ratio of 3.11 signifies that Ralph Lauren sold off or turned over its entire inventory 3.11 times. In other words, the ratio measures how quickly inventory is sold. Ralph Lauren's inventory roughly sits for 15 days before it's sold, so essentially, it will take about 15 days for Ralph Lauren to work off its current inventory. The receivables turnover and the days, sales, and receivables gives us an idea of how fast Ralph Lauren collects its sales that it makes on account. Based off my ratio calculations, Ralph Lauren collects its outstanding credit account and reloans the money 24 times during the year. On average, Ralph Lauren collected credit sales in 15 days. In other words, 
Ralph Lauren had 24 days worth of sales that were uncollected in that period. Furthermore, Ralph Lauren's total asset turnover ratio is relatively high, signifying a good use of assets to generate sales, as they collected $1.28 for every dollar in assets sold. It takes Ralph Lauren 78 cents in assets to create $1 in sales. Next, we will take a look at profitability ratios. Profitability ratios measure both how efficiently a firm uses its assets and how a firm manages its operations. Ralph Lauren's profit margin of 10.80% suggests that they generate 11 cents in profit for every dollar in sales. Many things, including efficiency, cost of goods sold, and pricing can affect the firm's pro um, profit margin. Return on asset is a measure of profit per dollar of an asset. Ralph Lauren's ROA is 13.84%, which is significantly lower than its rival, Michael Kors Corporation, whose um, ROE, ROA is currently at 40.49%. Ralph Lauren's ROE is 19.82%, meaning that for every dollar in equity, Ralph Lauren generates $19.82 in profit. Return on equity is the amount of net income return as a percentage of shareholders' equity. The fact that Ralph Lauren's ROE exceeds their ROA reflects the use of their financial leverage, which is 1.43. Last but not least is the market value ratio. Ralph Lauren's calculated market value ratios are based on the price of one $168.52 as of March 28, 2013. The price earnings ratio measures how much an investor is willing to pay per dollar of the current earning for a company. Therefore, if a company has a high P.E. ratio, they have potential for future growth even if their earnings are not what the company has forecasted. RL's P.E. ratio of 21.07 shows that its shares sell for 21.07 times earnings and carry a price earnings multiple of 21.07. Ralph Lauren's market to book ratio of 4.05 shows the value of the company and what they are worth depending on the capital invested in the company. It takes in consideration the book value per share and the market value per share. A value less than one could mean that the stock is overvalued and this could be a bad for bringing in potential investors. However, Ralph Lauren's market to book ratio is above one, which means that the company is doing very well. Now we will take a look at Ralph Lauren's ROE history. As you can see in this chart, um, Ralph Lauren saw a major decrease in ROE during the 20, 2009 fiscal year. This can mainly be attributed to the global recession, but since then, Ralph Lauren's ROE has been on the rise as the economy has picked up and consumer spending has increased. Now we will take a look at the summary of technical analysis and charts. First, we will start with the year-to-year -year revenue and net income comparison. Year-on-year, -year, Ralph Lauren's revenues have remained flat at $6.86 billion. Although the company's net income grew 10.13% from $681 million in the fiscal year of 2012 to $750 million in the fiscal year of 2013. I assume that this growth was due to the reduction in the cost of goods sold as a percentage of sales from 41.71% to 40.16%, despite the flat revenues. In this graph, we take a look at Ralph Lauren share prices versus Coach, Burberry, and PVH Corporation. In Figure 4, you see that Ralph Lauren, which is in blue, share price has been outperformed by competitor Burberry, which is in red, over the past three years. At one point last year, Ralph Lauren and PBH Corporation, which is green, share prices were neck and neck. But based off the chart, we can see that PBH 
Corporation share price surpassed Ralph Lauren. Ralph Lauren is currently outperforming Coach, which is yellow. Um, based solely off of the chart, we can conclude that Ralph Lauren's share prices have remained fairly stable over the years. Now we will take a look at the earnings and growth forecast. In this section, Ralph Lauren's earnings per share and growth rate will be forecasted for the fiscal year of 2014. This table breaks down Ralph Lauren's income statement data for the fiscal years of 2012 and 2013. In addition, a projection is made for those specific measurements for the upcoming 2014 fiscal year. Ralph Lauren has seen revenue growth around 11% um, year over year for the past two years. The 11% growth rate is mostly due to Ralph Lauren's better than expected fourth quarter revenues for fiscal year 2013. Based off various initiatives, including the launch of its South Korean website and an expansion in the number of European countries that can shop at its website, the firm expects their profit revenue growth to accelerate towards the end of the fiscal year. For these reasons, I forecast 2014 a conservative rev revenue growth rate of 7%, which is a slight decrease from Ralph Lauren's average revenue growth rate of roughly 11% over the past two years. On the expense side, Ralph Lauren's expenses have consistently remained at 84% of sales over the last two years. However, I believe Ralph Lauren's expenses will see a slight increase due to the company's increased spending on new stores and next technology upgrades, amongst other things. For this reason, I forecast the expense will increase to 88% of sales. Here is the analyst coverage, um, and as you can see, based off the chart, there is a general consensus um, that Ralph Lauren is a strong buy, and this is more than likely due to Ralph Lauren's positive growth trajectory and earnings. And also, if you take a look, here's the analyst estimates for their earnings per share. They actually fall right in line with what I forecasted for 2014's um, earnings per share to be. I said that it would be 9.85, and if you'll see that the average estimate is 9.98. So my forecast does fall in line with the analyst. Now we will move on to risk and pricing. Um, in this section, we will discuss Ralph Lauren's risk factors and their pricing. First, we will start with the capital asset pricing model, which is the most popular model for estimating returns from risky security stock, um, securities such as stock. The required or expected return according to the capital asset pricing model is you have the risk-free rate plus the beta, and then in parentheses, it's the market-wide stock returns minus the risk-free rate. So based off of my calculations, the capital asset pricing model came out to 15.26%. Therefore, Ralph Lauren's expected return is 15.26% in the current market. Next, we need to discuss the risk factors. The risk premium is the difference in the value between a risky investment and that of a safe investment. The risky investment is compared to the T-bill, which is considered to have almost no risk at all. The risk premium formula um, is equal to expected return minus the risk-free ratio. Based off of those calculations, Ralph Lauren has a risk premium of 5.26, meaning that an additional yield of 5.26% is required by investors to assume the additional risk of purchasing Ralph Lauren stock as opposed to the risk-free investment. Last but not least, we will take a look at the valuation based on price multiples. Currently, the earnings per share for Ralph Lauren is 7.91, so $7.91. The fair price, calculate, um, fair price can be calculated by the earnings per share times the PE. So based off my fair price calculation, um, currently Ralph Lauren should be valued at $166.11. 
But if you'll see, the current uh, market value for Ralph Lauren is $165.80 as of October the 2nd, 2013. This means that currently um, Ralph Lauren is undervalued in the market. Now it's recommendation time. Based off my evaluation of Ralph Lauren, I believe that the company is well positioned in their industry. This is evident by its long track record of increasing revenues and expanding operating margins over the past few years. In addition, the company's franchise continues to strengthen through expanding their already diversified product line, the distribution of their products across multiple channels, and their increasing significant international presence. My financial analysis and forecasting indicate a fair value price of $166.11, which is, which is slightly higher than the current trading price of $165.80. Therefore, I classify Ralph Lauren as a strong buy and remain optimistic about Ralph Lauren's future performance, based off the points highlighted throughout my analysis. And that is it. Thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope you will surely purchase the Ralph Lauren Corporation stock. Thank you.